Up to this point in this unit, we've been proving things about angles and segments. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to prove that lines are parallel. So in each of these things I'm going to be talking about, we're going to be writing the converse of all of those theorems that we just learned. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then remember we had all of these different things with angles. So the first one was corresponding angles are congruent. So if I write the converse of that, if two lines are parallel, if two parallel lines cut by transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. The converse of that would be if corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Okay, so here's what we're looking for. Notice that I do not have these lines marked parallel. I don't have those arrows showing that those are parallel. So what we're looking for is two lines that are cut by transversal, and you see these are corresponding angles. I would suggest tracing them out. Do you see how that looks kind of like an upside down F? Okay, so when you're looking in diagrams, you might want to look for that F shape. So if you notice that those angles are congruent, then you know that those two lines that make the F part are congru or not congruent, they're parallel. All right, same thing if we do the converse of the alternate interior angles. So that would read, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then those lines are parallel. So if I trace those out, they kind of look like a Z shape to me. And again, the Z could be forwards or backwards, but when I have alternate interior angles congruent, then I know the two lines that form the Z part, that's going to be, those are the lines that are parallel. So this is, we'll put a Z shape. Now we also had alternate exterior angles. So if I know that alternate exterior angles are congruent, that's these, then the lines are parallel. Unfortunately, I don't have a nice letter that looks like this. <laughs> It just looks like. It looks like that. So, if you can think of a cool thing to help you remember that shape, then let us know in class. <laughs> All right? But basically, if we know alternate exterior angles are congruent, then those lines are parallel. All right? And then we have consecutive interior, which also remember our same side interior angles. So if we know same side interior angles are, remember, those are supplementary. If those are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So if I'm tracing these out, angle 5 and angle 3, they make that U shape. So it looks like a sideways U. Or you can say a C, a backward C. Some people like C. All right, so if we know those are supplementary, then make sure you're, they're not congruent, they are supplementary, then we know those lines that create the U's, the U part is, are those lines are parallel. All right, so let's apply this. So let's look at these. It's decide which lines are parallel. So first they're asking us about AG and CE. So let's look at AG and CE. Now again, we can't go by how they look, because if I was going by how they look, they would kind of look like they're parallel. We have to go by angle measures. So what I'm seeing is I have this angle and this angle. Okay, so I'm going to erase this part so you can see the Z shape. Do you see that Z shape? So these would indicate that they're alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles should be congruent. So this is going to be 67 plus 50, and this is 67 plus 46 you can see that those are not equivalent. They're not congruent. All right, so we know that these are not parallel. And again, that's the parallel symbol. All right, now let's look at B, H, and D, F. So I'm going to erase all of these markings. 
And let's look at BH, which is this line, and DF. So if I look at angles that are on that, notice that those angles that we were previously working with, they're kind of split. So I could either look at these, but here's what I want you to notice is that um, 50 and 46 are not really the exterior angles. And here's how I know that. The same line that I'm using to do that is not the same line that I'm using to do that. Um, that's not really at what the uh, question is asking us about. That's asking us about AG and CE, which we already know are not parallel. So those angles, those alternate exterior angles, that is not related to what we're trying to figure out here. So what we have to do is let's trace out the BH and then this transversal. Okay, so if you see that, that's making that Z shape with the 67. So those two angles are congruent. They're alternate interior angles, so that means that these are parallel. Okay, and we know that because of the alternate interior angle converse theorem, the one we just talked about. Notice I abbreviated with AIA. All right, another way we can use this is we can force lines to be parallel by picking an x value that will make that true. So for example, here we want uh, lines P and Q to be parallel, so then we want these alternate exterior angles to be congruent. So in order to find the appropriate x, we would need to set those equal to one another and then solve for x. So we would say x needs to be 10 in order for P to be parallel to Q. And then over here, what kinds of angles are these? These make that U shape. So these that need to be same side interior, which means that those two angles, we don't want them congruent to each other. We want them to add up to equal 180. So if we combine those together, and then subtract the 15, and we get x equals 55. So those are two different examples of how we can force lines to be parallel or pick a x to do that. Now another way we can prove lines that are parallel is by using the transitive property of parallel lines. So this says that if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So for example, let's say I know P and Q are parallel. Okay, and then I know Q and R are parallel, then that would mean P has to be parallel to R, all right, because they're parallel to the same line, which was Q, all right, which is kind of handy, especially when we start doing proofs with, with these parallel lines, is if I have all these lines that are parallel, I want to be able to show that this line is parallel to this one. Well, all I have to show is that each and, and one in between is parallel to, the, to each other. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to talk about perpendicular lines.